What's up guys and welcome to Xbox Ready, the YouTube channel that is all about Xbox. I'm Ray, and remember, if you want to stay Xbox ready, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell to get alerted whenever I post a new video. This week is shaping up to be a pivotal moment in the history of Xbox, with Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, and Sarah Bond all slated to appear on this week's edition of the official Xbox podcast to unveil Xbox's new business plan and to address certain rumors that have been swirling around the Xbox brand for the past week or so. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what to expect from this momentous presentation, what Xbox fans deserve to hear, and whether or not Xbox's new multi-platform strategy is actually Apple's fault? Let's discuss. While the gaming world waits with bated breath to hear Xbox's announcement later this week, we may already have a clue as to what they're going to tell us, thanks to reporter Shannon Liao, who had a section about Xbox in her weekly Substack industry newsletter. In this newsletter, she talks about an all-hands memo sent out by Phil Spencer himself that was intended to ensure staff about a number of things. He reportedly told employees that Xbox has no intention to stop making consoles, and that the Xbox strategy going forward is going to include multiple devices. There are some people reporting that in this memo, he did confirm that certain games like Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves were being shipped out to other consoles. Other people are saying that it wasn't that clear or he didn't address it at all. So the jury is still out on that. Looks like we're going to have to wait until Thursday to figure it out. So cool. Xbox is still going to be making consoles, baby, just like the good old days. Maybe we'll get a digital Series X. Maybe they'll tease the next generation of Xbox consoles. Your boy Ray is still going to have a YouTube channel that's all about Xbox stuff. Here's the thing though, it is cool that Xbox is going to keep making consoles, but Microsoft needs to give us a damn good reason to buy an Xbox. If they do end up shipping their first party games to other platforms like PlayStation and Nintendo, and we live in a world where you can play Xbox games on PC, PlayStation consoles, Nintendo consoles on your phone, then people need a damn good reason to buy an Xbox because it's definitely not gonna be because of their strong first-party exclusive titles. We need a reason beyond, oh, the Xbox ecosystem is really good. Oh, Game Pass is really cool. Oh, I really like the shape of the controller. I prefer it over PlayStation. What is Microsoft cooking up that will make it appealing for people to drop money on their hardware? Rumor suggests that the next generation of consoles are gonna come in two SKUs, like what we saw with the One S and X and the Series S and X. Wow, I really gotta make sure my pronunciation is right on that. I, I should have said series X and S. S and X, that's, that's a little risky. But word on the street is that next generation, Microsoft is gonna ship two different Xbox consoles. One that's like a traditional high-end console that you plug into your TV or your monitor or whatever, much like what we see with the Series X. Separate rumors suggest that it's gonna come out in 2026 and that it's going to be less powerful than the PlayStation 6, but also cheaper. So if you're buying the next generation of Xbox console, you're not doing so to get the most powerful console or to get the console where the games look best on. No, if you really wanted that, if the rumors are true, you would wait for the PlayStation 6. The second skew, again, this is all just rumors, but word on the street is that it's going to be an Xbox handheld that you can take with you on the go. You can put it into a little dock so you can play it on your TV, much like a Nintendo Switch, and that it's going to be developed by the Surface team and not a traditional Xbox development team. And don't get me wrong, that is dope. I have long wanted an Xbox handheld ever since I was a little kid playing on a PlayStation Portable. A handheld Xbox in 2026, that would be sick as hell. That would be dope. But the handheld market nowadays, it's getting pretty crowded. Why would I buy a dedicated Xbox handheld when I can go and buy a Steam Deck that plays all the Xbox games that get shipped to Steam day one and all the Steam games that don't make it over to Xbox consoles? I could take my Steam Deck on the go. It has a little dock so I can play on my monitor. How is the Xbox handheld going to beat that? What features is it going to have? And oh yeah, why would I buy an Xbox handheld versus a Switch 2? The second iteration of a console that has a great track record, has a great library of exclusives, a console that I can take with me on the go and also dock and play on my television. And oh yeah, is probably going to get Xbox games too. Make no mistake, guys, even if Nintendo doesn't get Hi-Fi Rush or Pentiment and it's looking like they are, they're going to get Xbox games because Xbox 
pinky promise they swore on their mother's grave that they would bring stuff like Call of Duty to Nintendo consoles. Maybe not the Switch, but future Nintendo hardware. No matter how you look at it, this Thursday is a make or break moment for Xbox. Many fans are already irked by this news. Xbox potentially shipping their exclusives to PlayStation of all places. Ugh, I hate PlayStation. No, I actually really don't. Underneath that camera, I have a PlayStation 5 right there. It's been hiding behind my monitor this whole time. A lot of Xbox fans out there don't really mind. They're actually very hopeful about the direction that Xbox is going. It's not really make or break for me if they decide to ship their exclusives to PlayStation 5. I can't really tell if I have like any solid reason for that or if after years of disappointment, I'm just that resilient. But Xbox can't take their fans' patience for granted any longer. This Thursday, they have to step it up and sell us on some really, really exciting good stuff. Otherwise, they risk losing even more fans. No matter what, this Thursday, February 15th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time or 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are going to get answers. Matt Booty, Sarah Bond, Phil Spencer, they're going to get together and film a special episode of the Xbox official podcast that's set to air on Thursday. You'll be able to watch it on YouTube once it goes live or anywhere you get your podcasts. I usually listen and watch through Spotify. And they're expected to give us a rundown of the future of Xbox and hopefully finally address these rumors rumors about multi-platform Xbox titles. The anticipation is only building because they had the opportunity to come out and shut it down, but they didn't. They were like, ooh, actually guys, let's, we're gonna meet for a week, talk about it, and then we're gonna have a presentation. And so the question is, if Thursday rolls around and Phil Spencer is like, no more Xbox exclusives, well, yeah, they'll be on Xbox for a year, you'll be able to get them first, but then they're gonna be shipped out to PlayStation. Would you stick around? I don't think this is fantastic news, but it's not make or break news for me. Unfortunately, at this point, I'm just like so entrenched in the Xbox ecosystem. A lot of my digital games are tied up with my gamer tag, which ironically is something that Phil Spencer has spoken on in the past. He said that the Xbox One generation was the worst to lose because that's when everyone built up their digital library and they didn't want to abandon it by switching from something like PlayStation 4 to the Xbox Series X because they wouldn't have access to those games anymore. I'm kind Kind of in that boat. I got a lot of digital Xbox games and it's kind of reassuring that they're not going to be totally useless because they're still going to be Xbox consoles. So I kind of got some skin in the game like to at least see how all of this plays out. But I can 100% see why people, especially someone who's considering buying an Xbox Series X versus a PlayStation 5, would be a little hesitant to invest in the Xbox brand. Because if there's a scenario where you can buy a PlayStation, play all of their exclusives like God of War, Spider-Man, Horizon, Wolverine coming up. And if you're really patient and you wait a year or two, play all the Xbox exclusives like Indiana Jones, I don't know, Blade, the next Elder Scrolls, Fable even, then why wouldn't you just save the couple of hundred bucks and buy a PlayStation? It's kind of more appealing than even having a PC in that scenario, considering that PlayStation, they tend to drag their feet when porting their games over to PC. And then the question becomes, why, why, why would Xbox do this to me, to me personally? I don't know. That's kind of how people are acting. And I hate to say it, guys, I don't really have an answer for you. It's probably a culmination of things versus one specific thing that's happened. Number one being, well, Xbox consoles are once again being outsold by PlayStation by a two to one margin. This is exactly what happened with the Xbox One versus PlayStation 4 generation. PS4, I think they topped out at like, what, 140 million or something like that. And Xbox One consoles only managed to sell like 55, 56 million. Well, this generation, it's looking to be a lot of the same. PlayStation 5s, they're hovering at around like 77 million consoles sold. And Xbox, we don't even really know because Xbox does not report sales numbers of their consoles. Number two, the goal at the beginning of this generation, and at least a couple of years ago, according to recent document leaks, was to get Game Pass to 100 million subscribers. And we haven't had an update on subscriber numbers since... Well, a couple of years ago at this point, when it was at 25 million. Current estimates have the Game Pass subscriber count at 33 million right now, not even close to 100 million. And that too is probably due to a number of reasons. They did have a dry year, according to Phil Spencer, even in 2022. They lacked the day one first party additions that were promised to us at the beginning of this generation and that we got a little of at the end of 2021. And when those day one first party exclusives finally came, like Redfall and Starfield, they 
debut to middling reviews. And you have to wonder, did Game Pass kind of lose their chance? When games like Redfall and Minecraft Legends, when they were added to the service, did people kind of lose confidence in the day one Game Pass hype? You also have to consider that Microsoft is seeing absolute Looney Tunes dollar signs when it comes to their content and services division, i.e. selling games and getting people subscribed to Game Pass. They're seeing a ton of revenue from content and services and pretty much nothing from hardware. After they close the Activision Blizzard deal, their revenue from gaming eclipses that of even Windows, which is their bread and butter. So I'm sure if it was up to Microsoft and Microsoft alone, they'd be like, yeah, ditch the Xbox hardware, ditch the consoles, and let's just focus on selling Call of Duty, which sounds like a terrible dystopian future. But hey, we live in corporate America, or at least some of us do. I live in corporate America. Microsoft, Xbox, they're an American company. So yeah, that's probably what they're prioritizing. Maybe Xbox has been trying to condition us, trying to tell us, trying to signal us that they were planning on shipping their exclusives this entire time. Maybe you remember a phrase that is now famously associated with Phil Spencer. Whenever Everyone plays, we all win. They even featured it in the 20th anniversary Xbox controller. Xbox has been saying a lot of things this generation, but the one thing that they always keep coming back to is that they want to reach as many players as possible, no matter where they may be on a monitor, on a TV, on a phone. So maybe that slogan also applies to I don't, the screen of a Nintendo Switch or the dashboard of a PlayStation 5. If you ask certain Microsoft people, I'm sure that's what they would tell you. Like the CFO who was recently at the Wells Fargo Tech Summit being like, yeah, we want Game Pass on Switch. We want Game Pass on PlayStation. And then Phil Spencer was like, no, 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 we don't. Shut up. A big part of this honestly could have been mobile gaming. Research says that as of 2021, there was over 2 billion mobile gamers that are just waiting, waiting to be reached by Xbox. And I'm sure Microsoft saw that and they were like, ooh, just like chomping at the bit, just drooling, thinking like, man, we can really, if we can get a storefront onto phones, onto iOS and Android devices, yeah, we can really boost our player base. Xbox has been very transparent about their intentions of breaking into the mobile gaming market. Oh, we'd love to break into mobile gaming. Oh, especially the King portion from the Activision Blizzard deal will empower us to break into mobile gaming and reach more players than ever. The only problem is, well, Apple. Because if you're gonna sell games through the App Store and also have microtransactions in those games, Apple takes a huge cut of it. This was a big point of contention with Epic Games that culminated in a long, drawn-out legal battle against Apple, which ultimately resulted in them pulling Fortnite from iPhones entirely. It was widely believed that Xbox was relying on a certain bit of legislation being worked on in the European Union to open up iOS and Android devices and make it so... Microsoft could put their own Xbox storefront on there and not have to pay a ton of fees. This legislation is referred to as the Digital Markets Act, and actually, it did just that. The European Union made it so that Apple and Android, they have to open up their devices to rival storefronts. And then Apple turned around and said, all right, Bet. We're going to change our policy and make it to where you still have to pay crazy fees, even if you don't distribute your app through our store. A bunch of people had a lot of things to say about this, including Sarah Bond, the CEO of Spotify, CEO from Epic Games, Apple's biggest op. And suddenly, Xbox's hopes of reaching billions of billions of players that play games on their phones became a lot harder. And all of this happened before news broke of Xbox exploring the possibility of shipping games onto Switch or PlayStation. Suddenly, Xbox is in this position where they're like, okay, we can't distribute our games in the mobile marketplace like we want them to but I guess we can ship them out to other consoles and still reach our goals of expanding the player base, generating more revenue for our content and services division, and overall just getting closer to the goals that I was just talking about earlier. Did Apple inadvertently ruin Xbox's plans and force them to go multi-platform? That might be a little bit of a reach. I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry, I should chill. Again, like I said earlier in the video, it's probably the culmination of a lot of things and not just Apple's fault, but no matter what, we are set to get answers this week on Thursday. And you better believe that I am going to be talking about it as soon as they are done. So make sure you check back after the event Thursday if you want to hear my thoughts. 
Also, I'm posting a lot to Instagram nowadays. I have an Xbox Ready account. I have my personal account. I'm posting to TikTok as well. So I'd appreciate a follow there as well if you can. No matter what Xbox does, whether they ditch consoles or not, whether they go full third party or not, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be talking about it. And I'd love to see you in the next edition of Xbox Ready.